Well, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Welcome to Temple Emmanuel. Whether you are joining us online or you are here with us in our sanctuary, we are so happy to be bringing in Shabbat with you and to be sharing in this sacred hour together. With the world roiling and churning all about us, with climate disasters erupting one after the other in our midst, with tensions blazing in Israel, this is our time to pause, to take a breath, and to listen. To listen to the sage words of our ancestors, to listen to the stirring music of our people, and to listen to the still small voice of God within us all, the voice guiding us towards goodness, towards righteousness, and towards peace. I'm Rabbi Sarah Sepaden, joined on the Bima by Rabbi Joshua Davidson and Cantor Mo Glasman. And now that you've heard who we are, I'd invite you to take a moment to say hello and Shabbat Shalom to those who are around you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Wonderful. We are going to harness this spirit of community and warmth and joy, and we're going to take it with us as we begin our service on page 15 with our Shabbat candle lighting. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we by our lives give light to all who behold us. Together as their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light so may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. Baruch atah Adonai And as we have welcomed Shabbat with light, so too do we welcome Shabbat with joyous song. We turn to page 17 for L'chun Aranana and continue on page 21 with Zamru Ladonai as we continue with our Kabbalat Shabbat. Oh, 
Turn to page 32. Ruler of the universe, we lift up our hearts to thee who made heaven and earth. The infinite heavens and the quiet stars tell of thine endless power. We turn from our daily toil, from its difficulties and its conflicts, from its clamor and its weariness, to meditate on the serene calm of thy presence which pervades all creation and hallows our life with the blessing of Sabbath peace. Source of peace, bless thou our worship on this Sabbath day. Enlighten our eyes to behold thy guiding power in all nature, from the remotest star to our inmost soul. Inspire our hearts to love thee and to make thy will the law of our life. Grant us comfort in sorrow, strength in trial, and the courage to serve thee in all our ways. May our words of prayer and our unspoken meditations be acceptable unto thee, our creator and redeemer. We continue with the Baruch Please rise as you are able.
Praise be thou, O Lord, our God, ruler of the world, by whose law the shadows of evening fall and the gates of morn are opened. In wisdom thou hast established the changes of times and seasons and ordered the ways of the stars in their heavenly courses. Creator of heaven and earth, O living God, rule thou over us forever. Praise be thou, O Lord, for the day and its work, and for the night and its rest. Together, infinite as is thy power, even so is thy love. Thou didst manifest it through Israel, thy people, by laws and commandments, by statutes and ordinances, hast thou led us in the way of righteousness and brought us to the light of truth. Therefore, at our lying down and our rising up, we will meditate on thy teachings and find in thy laws true life and length of days. Oh, that thy love may never depart from our hearts. Praise be thou, O Lord, who hast revealed thy love through Israel. We rise and say together, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be upon thy heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt speak of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be for frontlets between thine eyes. Thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates, that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God who led you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Eternal truth it is that thou alone art God, and there is none else. And through thy power alone has Israel been redeemed from the hand of oppressors. Great deeds hast thou wrought in our behalf, and wonders without number. Thou hast kept us in life, thou hast not let our footsteps falter. Thy love has watched over us in the night of oppression. Thy mercy has sustained us in the hour of trial. And now that we live in a land of freedom, may we continue to be faithful to thee and thy word. May thy law rule the life of all thy children and thy truth unite their hearts in fellowship. O oh God, our refuge and our hope, we glorify thy name now as did our ancestors in ancient days. Mi hambo ha baili maronai Mi hambo ha netar bakodesh Lo horate
redeemed Israel and saved us from arms stronger than our own, so mayest thou redeem all who are oppressed and persecuted. Praise be thou, O Lord, Redeemer of Israel. Tefila, page 37, please rise. Oh. 
ארוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו ואלוהי אבותינו ואמותינו, אלוהי אברהם, אלוהי יצחק ואלוהי יעקב, אלוהי שרה, אלוהי רבקה, אלוהי דעה ואלוהי רחל. האל הגדול היבוא בנורא, אל עיון גומר חסדים טובים וקונה הכל וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות ומביא גאולה לפני בניהם למען שמו באהבה מלך עוזר ומושיע ומגן ברוך אתה אדוני מגן אברהם בעזרת שרה. Eternal is thy power, O Lord, thou art mighty to save. In loving kindness thou sustainest the living. In the multitude of thy mercies thou preservest all. Thou upholdest the falling and healest the sick. Free us the captives and keep us faith with thy children in death as in life. Who is like unto thee, almighty God, author of life and death, source of salvation. Praise be thou, O Lord, who hast implanted within us eternal life. Thou art holy, thy name is holy, and thy worshipers proclaim thy holiness. Praise be thou, O Lord, the holy God. You may be seated. Grant us peace, thy most precious gift, O thou eternal source of peace, and enable Israel to be its messenger unto the peoples of the earth. Bless our country that it may ever be a stronghold of peace and its advocate in the council of nations. May contentment reign within its borders, health and happiness within its homes. Strengthen the bonds of friendship and fellowship among the inhabitants of all lands. Plant virtue in every soul. And may the love of thy name hallow every home and every heart. Praise be thou, O Lord, giver of peace. As we arrive at our healing prayer, we recognize that each of us enters into this sacred space with different circumstances and different needs. Some of us are filled with joy and are looking to share that joy. Others of us have endured struggles and heartache and pain and are seeking support during these very difficult times. And so we take a moment now to think of all those who are in need of healing, whether of body or mind or spirit, both in our communal space and throughout the world. And on this night, we think especially of those in Israel who are once again facing a moment of bitter conflict and agonizing fear. May all those in harm's way be protected under the shelter of God's loving embrace. And may peace soon come to this precious and holy land. If there are people or communities you know who are in need of healing at this time, I would invite you to say their names aloud so that they too may be woven into our prayers. For all those you mentioned, and for all those you are holding in your hearts, we continue now with our Misha Berach prayer on page 83. Misha Berach Avotenu, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. מי שפרח אמותינו, שרה נפקה לאברה as well. 
to read the words on the following pages or simply to meditate on the words inscribed upon your own hearts as we continue with silent meditation. We will come back together with the singing of Ki Elecha on page 87.
They tried to kill us, we survived, let's eat. You all know the old chestnut, which some attribute to the late comedian Alan King, purporting to encapsulate the Jewish historical experience and the purpose of every Jewish celebration. I prefer the Haggadah's original. In every age, an enemy rises to destroy us, yet through God's saving power, we endure. But both versions ring true. Pharaoh, Haman, Hadrian, Ferdinand and Isabella, Hitler. For too many generations of Jews, the fight to survive defined Jewish existence. And for generations more fortunate, staving off the next threat to Jewish well-being became the galvanizing force of Jewish activism and expression. Though observed this year tomorrow night and Sunday so as not to coincide with Shabbat, tonight begins Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of the Hebrew month of Av. On this date, according to Mishnah and Talmud, the first and second temples both were destroyed. The first in 586 BCE by the Babylonians and the second in 70 CE by the Romans. But that's not all believed to have occurred on this day of collective grief. On the 9th of Av 1290, Edward I drove the Jews from England. On the 9th of Av, 1492, we were expelled from Spain. Hitler, too, chose the day to inflict particular agony. And many other tragedies have been linked to the sorrowful anniversary, some with historical accuracy, others for symbolic purpose. The Talmud teaches that the day was foreordained as one of national disaster because on that date, early in Israel's desert wanderings, the ten faithless spies dispatched by Moses to scout Canaan returned reporting that the land was inhabited by giants and therefore unconquerable. And the people, despite all evidence of God's power on their side, believed them as punishment for that failure of vision and trust, the day was destined to be one of anguish for ages to come. And so the ninth of Av came to embody Jewish suffering. It won't surprise you to hear that the builders of Reform Judaism in Germany and the United States, while recognizing the significance of the temple's destruction, and of our exile and expulsion, did not view them as wholly tragic. Rather, they believed a Jewish diaspora could advance the Jewish mission of serving as a light to the nations. Certainly, they did not pray for the restoration of sacrificial worship. One of 19th century American Judaism's towering figures, Rabbi David Einhorn, who served Temple Bethel with which Temple Emmanuel merged, explained, 
Reform recognizes in the Flaming Temple Mount not a curtailment, but rather a continuation of the divine work of salvation, the conveyance of divinity to all the children of this earth for which Israel has been ordained. From the ashes of that one temple, thousands of places of worship came forth. From the grave of animal sacrifice and separate priesthood rose the magnificent phenomenon of the congregation of priests scattered over the entire world. He considered Tisha B'Av not a day of national catastrophe, but one of prophetic fulfillment and believed it should be marked as such. And then in the last century, with the ultimate restoration of Israel as a Jewish homeland after 2,000 years, other Jewish leaders believed that Tisha B'Av ought to be transformed from a day of mourning to one of rejoicing, as Zechariah prophesied it would be. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, he proclaimed, the fast shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasting. The debate about the observance of Tisha B'Av reflects a tension ongoing even today, not about Tisha B'Av per se, but about how we view and teach Jewish identity and purpose. Do we fast or do we feast? Or as some have put it, should we be about oi or joy? Do we spend our energy circling the wagons of self-defense, agonizing over every threat, be it anti-Semitism in America or Europe or hatred of Israel, all of which are real? Or do we face outward to engage with the world and publicly, fearlessly celebrate the joys of Judaism? It is, of course, a false dilemma. But the discussion is not unimportant. In an era of dwindling non-Orthodox affiliation, we cannot attract Jews or non-Jews to Jewish life by scaring them about what they may be getting themselves into. They need to experience the happiness and beauty and affirmation that Jewish life provides. But we would also be naive to think that all is fine and well in the Jewish world and that there are no present, even imminent, threats. The rise of anti-Semitic violence, ignorance about the Holocaust, and the demonization of Israel are all too real. Tisha B'Av, with its remembrance and mourning of tragedies past, can be for us an expression of communal solidarity, klal Yisrael, our commitment to Jewish peoplehood, and indeed, survival. As religiously liberal Jews, we balance two important priorities, our particular concerns and our universal responsibilities. We believe that as Jews, we have a duty to serve the wider world. Abraham, after all, was summoned to create a people through which all other peoples of the earth would be blessed. That is our sacred story. To be sure, other religious communities hear the same calling through their holy texts. But for liberal religionists, sometimes universal aspirations can overshadow their particular roots. For example, I would imagine for many of us, the phrase tikkun olam, repairing the world, is more familiar than klal Yisrael. And as the rebirth of the state of Israel and its early struggles for survival, not to mention the desperate plight of European Jewry prior to Israel's founding, recede in history, our people's particular experience will become less and less significant to future generations of Jews. One need only examine the attitudes of many younger liberal Jews toward Israel or their lack of familiarity with the history of anti-Semitism to see this, despite the fact that anti-Semitism is alive and well in the 21st century 
and Israel is under frequent physical and constant rhetorical attack. At this very moment, Israel is defending its citizens against attacks from Islamic Jihad in Gaza, which will almost certainly result in the tragic deaths of innocent Palestinians whose well-being is held captive to terrorists' ambitions. Last week, we learned that a United Nations appointee charged with investigating fairly allegations of human rights violations in Israel and the territories openly questioned Israel's membership in the international body and accused the, quote, Jewish lobby of largely controlling social media and attempting to undermine the agency's work. How can an official whose views of Israel are so biased serve on such a commission? Too often, that's just the case with the UN. And last month, in a resolution passed with overwhelming support, the Presbyterian Church USA's General Assembly accused the Israeli government of apartheid, just the latest instance in a pattern of unnuanced, unbalanced Mideast commentary. Fortunately, the local Presbyterian leaders with whom we work have repeatedly and publicly denounced such missives. It shouldn't need to be said that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is more complex than what any 189-word statement can convey, but apparently it does need to be said. Certainly non-Jews and Jews can be critical of the Israeli government's policies, and at times we should be. But we must never forget or let others neglect the broader context of what transpires there or the expressed desires of Israel's enemies to destroy her. And if we want our children to be able to respond to anti-Semitic and anti-Israel rhetoric on the college campus and explain to their classmates why being proudly Jewish shouldn't disqualify them from progressive social justice tikkun olam circles, then Klal Yisrael, commitment to Jewish peoplehood, needs to be more of an educational priority for us. And with all that said, it is not the oi, but rather the joy of Jewish life, its beauty, its ethics, its sanctification of our happiness that we must celebrate and lift up for all to see. That is, after all, what countless generations of Jews before us struggled, even died, to protect and defend. No less a lion-hearted fighter of anti-Semitism than Ambassador Deborah Lipstadt reminded us in her book and in our temple that we must avoid letting this longest hatred become the linchpin of Jewish identity. Jewish tradition in all its manifestations, religious, secular, intellectual, communal, artistic, and so much more, is far too valuable to be tossed aside and replaced with a singular concentration on the fight against hatred. We must never stop fighting the good fight, even as we rejoice in who we are. And as for Tisha B'Av, the collection of Midrashim on the Book of Lamentations, read in observance of the day, teaches that on the ninth of Av, the Messiah will one day be born, ushering in an age of peace. As religious liberals, we may believe differently that we are the ones who will bring that time, but we must believe it will come. Then all fasts will end, including those of the hungry who have no choice in the matter, and all of us will feast together at the table of a common humanity.
139. Let us adore the ever-living God and render praise unto you who spread out the heavens and established the earth whose glory is revealed in the heavens above and whose greatness is manifest throughout the world. You are our God. There is none else. Vahanath Nu May the time not be distant, O God, when your name shall be worshipped in all the earth, when unbelief shall disappear and error be no more. Fervently we pray that the day may come when all shall turn to you in love, when corruption and evil shall give way to integrity and goodness, when superstition shall no longer enslave the mind, nor idolatry blind the eye, when all who dwell on earth shall know that you alone are God, O oh, may all created in your image become one in spirit and one in friendship, forever united in your service. Then shall your sovereignty be established on earth and the word of your prophet fulfilled. The eternal God will reign forever and ever. Page 145, these words of the French dramatist and poet Emmanuel Edu, who wrote of life in the Warsaw Ghetto. To open eyes when others close them, to hear when others do not wish to listen, to look when others turn away, to seek to understand when others give up, to rouse oneself when others accept, to continue the struggle even when one is not the strongest, to cry out when others keep silent. To be a Jew, it is that, it is first of all that. And further, to live when others are gone and to remember when others 
have forgotten. We recall with love these members of our congregational family who have died either in recent days or at this season in years past. Florence Abrams, Patricia Banks, Jacob S. Barb, Minnie Levine Belgorod, Maury Bloom, Andrew Borey, Evelyn Citron, Fred Collins, Pauline Deitchman, Fred Ehrlich, David Fram, Rita Franklin, Samuel Feingold, Marilyn Glasser, Erwin Guzov, Larry Hartman, Marilyn Herskovitz, Mark Hochberg, Lois U. Horvitz, Dovey Lapidus Jaffe, Brandon Carmen, Fred Katz, Paul I. Kaufman, Lawrence Kramer, Ruth Litwin, James Monroe Marks, Leonard Mendelson, Edward Myers, Alan Pekalik, Jean Pearlbinder, Jack Phillips, Anna Rabinowitz, Sidney Walter Rosen, Morris Rottenberg, Dolores Roses, Anita Sabin, Conrad Sabin, Seymour Saltzman, Bess Schindel, Peter Sibthorpe, Carolyn Struss, Wally Weber, Hyman Weiser, Bertha Weiser, Irving Welsher, and Harriet Goldberg Winter. If you have suffered a recent loss, I'd invite you now to please rise. And if you're marking a yard site, the anniversary of a loved one's passing, would you please stand? And now all of us stand with you. And together we say, Yit gadal ve'yit kadash shemei rabba, v'yalma divrach yirute v'yamlich machute, v'chayachon uv'yomechon uv'chayye duchal be'y Yisrael, v'agala v'yizman kariv v'yimru amen. Yehe shemei rabba mevorach le'olam ul'almei almaya, yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yitramam v'yitnaseh, Viet Hadar, Viet Alev, Viet Alal, Shemei de Kudusha, Brihu, La Ela, mean call Birchata, Vishirata, Tush Bechata, Venechamata, Damiran, Biama, Vimru, Amen. Yehe, Shalama, Rabba, Bin Shemaya, Vichayim, Alenu, Val, Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. O se Shalom, Bim Roma, Hu Ya se Shalom, Alenu, Val, Kol Yisrael. May the one who makes peace in the heavens send peace to us and to all Israel. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Shabbat Shalom once again, everyone. We look forward to greeting you informally in a few moments out on Fifth Avenue. Our worship continues here tomorrow morning at 1030. And one announcement of special note in the coming week, Wednesday at 7, we're proud to be hosting a New York 12th Congressional District Candidates Forum. Register online at emmanuelnyc.org where you'll find information about other upcoming events and, of course, the High Holy Days, too. I'm aware that the summer months are often a time when some who may be looking for a home during those holidays are visiting either in person or online, and I would want you never to hesitate to call me or any of my colleagues to learn more about our wonderful temple. Now we'll continue with Kiddush and Motzi on pages 147 and 148.
Our closing song, Adon Alum, page 153. Please rise and join us. Adon Olam Hashem Ahalach B'terem Kol Yitzim Ivra L'Eg Nasa B'chev Sokol Azai Melech Shemoni Thank you. 
May God bless you and keep you. May the light of God's face shine upon you and may God be gracious to you. May God turn his countenance toward you and bless you with peace. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.